have been quack quacked here and mooed there all over this farm. I need eight plus piggies for piggy pie. Where are the piggies? Farmer looked here. He looked there. Here he looked. There he looked. Everywhere he looked and looked. No piggy. What do you mean no piggies, you flea bitten seed spreader? You must have piggies. No piggies. Her stomach growled. It grumbled. If there were no piggies, there would be no piggy pie. Now what was she going to eat? Excuse me, little lady. Wolf's the name. Let me give you some advice. Forget about the pigs. Forget about the pigs. They're too tricky. Trust me, I've been chasing the three little pigs for days. And I'm starving. Look at me. I'm nothing but skin and bones. Grips pinched his arm. Well, not quite. Mr. Wolf, I have the most wonderful idea. I was thinking, since you haven't eaten, and I haven't eaten, why don't you go home with me for a lunch? I'm a very good cook. Why, that does
Now, when taken with other foods, other amino acids and nutrients tend to protect these brain cells. But when taken alone, the results are quite dangerous. Killing these brain cells can lead to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Lou Gehrig's disease in the future. Now, where the phenylalanine is concerned, it turns, has, comes with a bunch of different side effects. Now, when phenylalanine starts to bring down at room temperature, it turns into a cancer-causing agent. In fact, Dr. Adrian Gertz, the former U.S. Food and Drug Administration toxicologist, stated that the cancer-causing potential of aspartame is a matter that has been established beyond any reasonable doubt. This chemical also lowers its levels of serotonin in the brain, which helps you sleep. Unfortunately, because of the effect these two chemicals have on the brain, you'll probably find yourself addicted. Where the, where the methanol is concerned, it turns into formic acid and formaldehyde. Formic acid is what ants inject into their victims when they bite. And formaldehyde is used to preserve biological specimens such as frogs. Now, to protect yourself from these harmful chemicals, your body will start to put on fat, which totally defeats the purpose of drinking a diet soft drink. Other side effects aspartame can have in your body include vision damage, multiple sclerosis, seizures, and much more. Now that you know how soft drinks can harm your body, I'm going to ask you to stop and consider the amount of pop you drink and encourage you to either cut back or quit drinking pop altogether. Now, cutting back or quitting won't be an easy task once you become addicted. I suggest making this change in steps in order to avoid some of the withdrawal symptoms. One of the most common withdrawal symptoms you'll probably experience will be a headache, but I believe this is a small price to pay to break a habit that could ruin your life. The spring 2004 issue of Bigger, Faster, Stronger magazine stated that you should allow yourself at least 60 days to recover from these symptoms. So don't expect your desire for that can of pop to cease right away. Now your struggle won't be made any easier when you consider how often images of soft drinks are put into our heads. The spring 2002 issue of Health Matters magazine stated that Coca-Cola spent about $1.6 billion on advertising in 1999. Even J.K. Rowling, the author of the ever popular Harry Potter series, has made a deal with Coca-Cola to incorporate their products into her books. But despite the addictive ingredients and aggressive advertising, there are some people who are still trying to take a stand. In the fall of 2001, the administrators of Eisenhower Middle School unplugged their pot machines for a week. They replaced them with a different type of vending machine that contained dairy products instead. Now this school still continues to unplug their pot machines, but only during the lunch hour. They've also started placing plastic cups next to their machines to encourage students to share their bottle of pop instead of drinking the whole thing themselves. Even though these changes may seem quite small, they are truly the stepping stones to reducing soft drink consumption. Now that you know how soft drinks can harm your body and what it will take to reduce your chances of experiencing their side effects, I challenge you to follow the lead of the administrators of Eisenhower Middle School and start making small adjustments in your lifestyle. Honestly, how hard would it be to buy one less case of pop to stock your fridge with or to go for water instead of a soft drink next time you eat at a restaurant? After all, P.O.P. is B.A.D. Do you remember your first pet? Mine was my brother's dog. He liked me better. Well, I was sad when he died, as are most children, coping with the loss of a pet. As in, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. I will never forget. Friday, May 10th. It is the most important day of my life. After school, I went straight to my room to change my clothes and check my turtle, Dribble. I ran to my dresser to check Dribble. He wasn't there. His bowl with the rocks and water was there, but Dribble was gone. I got really scared. I thought maybe he died while I was at school and I didn't know about it. So I rushed into the kitchen and hollered, Mom, where's Dribble? My mother was baking something. My brother sat on the kitchen floor banging pots and pans together. You mean he's not in his bowl? I shook my head. Oh dear, I hope he's not crawling around here somewhere. I'm going to have to go look in the bedrooms. My mother hurried off. I looked at my brother. He was smiling. Fudge, do you know where Dribble is? Fudge kept smiling. Did you take him? Did you, Fudge? Fudge giggled and covered his mouth with his hands. Where is he? What did you do with my turtle? Fudge looked up at me. In tummy. What do you mean, in tummy? Dribble in tummy. What tummy? This one, dribble in this tummy right here. I decided to go along with his game. Okay, how did he get in there, Fudge? Fudge stood up, he jumped up and down and sang out, 
I ate him, ate him, ate him. Then he ran out of the room. My mother came back into the kitchen. Well, I just can't seem to find him anywhere. Mom, how could you? How could I do what, Peter? How could you let him do it? Let who do what, Peter? Let fudge eat dribble! My mother started to mix whatever she was baking. Don't be silly, Peter. Dribble is a turtle. He ate dribble! Peter Warner Hatcher, you stop saying that. We'll go ask him. Just go ahead and ask him. Fudge was standing in the kitchen doorway with a big grin on his face. My mother picked him up and patted his head. Fudgy, tell Mommy where Brother's turtle is. In tummy. What tummy? Mine. My mother put Fudge down on the kitchen counter where he couldn't get away from her. Oh, you're fooling Mommy, right? No fool. My mother turned very pale. You really ate your brother's turtle? Big smile for Fudge. You mean that you put him in your mouth and chewed him up like this? No. A smile of relief crossed my mother's face. Of course you didn't. It's just a joke. She put Fudge down on the floor and gave me a look. Fudge blabbed. No chew. No chew. Go, go. All gone, turtle. Now Fudge is Tommy. My mother moaned and picked up my little brother. Oh no, my angel, my precious little baby. Oh no. My mother didn't stop to think about the turtle. She didn't even get dribble a thought. She didn't even stop to wonder how my brother liked being swallowed by my little brother. She ran to the phone and dialed the operator. Oh, help, this is an emergency. My baby ate a turtle. Send an ambulance right away, 25 West 68th Street. We arrived at the back door of the hospital. Fudge was whisked away by two nurses. My mother ran after him. You wait here, young man, another nurse called to me, pointing to a bench. I sat down on the hard wooden bench. I didn't have anything to do. I watched the clock on the wall for an hour and ten minutes. Then my mother, then the door opened and my mother stepped out with Dr. Cone. Hello, Dr. Cone. Did you get my turtle? Not yet, Peter. We'll get him out. We gave Fudge some medicine already. That should do the trick nicely. What kind of medicine? What trick? Castor oil, Peter. We'll just have to wait, probably until tomorrow or the day after. Fudge will have to spend the night here. Will Dribble be all right? My mother and Dr. Cone looked at each other. I knew the answer before he shook his head and said, I think you may have to get a new turtle, Peter. I don't want a new turtle. I want Dribble. That's the only turtle I want. The next day was Saturday. Every hour the phone rang. It was my mother calling from the hospital with a report. Not yet, I see, Grandma repeated. Nothing's happening yet. I was miserable. I was lonely. Grandma didn't even notice. In the middle of the night, the phone rang again. It woke me up and I crept into the hallway to hear what was going on. Grandma shouted, Whoopee! It's out! Good news at last! She hung up and turned to me. The medicine has finally worked, Peter. The turtle is out! Alive or dead? Peter Warner Hatcher, what a question! So my brother no longer had a turtle inside of him. And I no longer had a turtle. I didn't like Fudge as much as I thought I did before the phone rang. That night, my father came home with a box. This box is a surprise for you. Well, I don't want another turtle. Don't think you can make me feel better with another turtle, because you can't. Who said anything about a turtle? You see, your mother and I think you've been a really good sport about the whole situation. After all, Dribble was your pet. I looked up. Could I be hearing right? Did they really remember about me and Dribble? I put my hand inside the box. I felt something warm and soft and furry. I knew it was a dog, but I pretended to be surprised when he jumped up on my lap and licked me. Fudge cried, Oh, doggy! See, doggy! He ran right over and grabbed my dog's tail. Fudge, my father said, taking him away. This is your brother's dog. Maybe someday you'll have a dog of your own, but this one belongs to Peter. Do you understand? Peter's dog. That's right, my father said. Peter's dog. Then he turned to me. And just to be sure, we got a dog that's going to grow quite big, much too big for your little brother to swallow. We all laughed. My dog was neat. I named him Turtle to remind me.
very had a little